Starting off, we have a couple of things from the same category, that being surface mount miscellaneous parts. I'm expecting capacitors, diodes, and an op amp, and it looks like that's what I've gotten. 47 micro and 33 micro, 10 volts, 6.3 volts. Surface mount electrolytics that I can use in basically 5 volt circuits. I'm making a PCB with addressable LEDs on it, so of course I need some bulk capacitance for the 5 volt power rail. These should be general purpose LM358, and it looks like those are. So if I need an op amp, general purpose, not necessarily for higher quality audio, because I believe these can give some crossover distortion, but if I just need to pass some other kind of signal, maybe scale it or filter it, those are useful to have around. I have a bunch of through-hole parts, so I thought I would get surface mount just in case. And a kit of surface mount Zener diodes, 2.7 volts up to 30 volts. I also tend to use 2.4 volt Zeners, particularly for going across an audio path back to back to try to keep peaks down. So I've ordered some separate specific 2.4 volt ones, but it's good to have a general purpose selection as well. And this, one of those ESP8266 relay board modules. It comes with the separate ESP8266 module with the 8-pin header on it. It has a few basic pins for power, reset, serial communication, basic I.O. capabilities. These things have been around for years, and I believe you have to hook up some sort of a separate UART programming interface, maybe on a breadboard. I'll have to look up how to get this thing programmed, but then you can wirelessly control a relay. So after all these years of these being around, the reason I wanted one of these right now, a while ago I made an ESP8266 wireless doorbell extender where I used a clamp-on current transformer so I can detect when someone's ringing a doorbell and wirelessly communicate that to a second ESP8266, which has a relay, and I can ring a secondary doorbell elsewhere in the house so that I can hear it everywhere. The only thing is, I needed an ESP8266 module, so I took it out of the doorbell, and now I'm going to just put this dedicated relay board back in. This one is a bunch of AC power switches. Three different styles, or it looks like two different styles, three colors. So I have two different styles, blue and green, three pins, so that's single pull, single throw, but the third pin is to control the light in there. And then this amber, I don't remember the pinout on this, but I was mostly looking for these. Whenever I get around to it, there's a project where I want to be able to turn on multiple AC loads. So I needed several switches and having them lighted, since there's going to be multiples, I can just glance and see which ones are on. And if I need to differentiate, I can use different colors, like maybe there's a master and then a couple of separate loads, things like this. I don't know if it will show up here, but one of the contacts is slightly more brass colored and the other two are more chrome colored. So that should be the connection for the light and the other two should be the single pole, single throw. So we would want to break the hot connection going to a load. Therefore, we would put hot in the center, our load that we're switching over here. And then if we put a neutral on this bronze tinted contact, when the switch is off, nothing's happening. When it's on, hot goes to the load and hot and neutral go to the internal light. These are the two chrome looking contacts. Okay, so this is the on position. Now if I put hot on the center and neutral 
over on the right, I should get this lighting up. Well, this is not dubious at all. Main power on the power strip. And we have a lighted rocker switch. Let me get this safer. This, I'm not sure what it is. I could not see any tracking and there's no description. Okay, I now think those are plastic standoffs for PCBs. It's one of those packages that had five or six labels on top of each other and it barely had a shipping address anymore. I'm surprised sometimes that things make it here. I don't remember when I ordered these at this point, but these are if I want to keep a board up off the surface and I don't really have any other standoffs, I don't want to put any screws, those just push in and stay retained and you can squeeze that in to remove it again and then that will just sit up off the surface, nothing will short out on the bottom. And here's a package I ordered, it looks like, two years ago. I had to look this up. Summer of 2022. This is a multi-game Nintendo cartridge and it's supposed to have 852 games in it. The reason it's been sitting here two years without even getting opened, I have four old NES consoles, including my original from the 90s, but none of them worked. But I recently got two of them working, and I showed that in a video on the other channel. I think they're showing there's two different game menus in here. You press select on the controller, to switch between two banks of 400 something and the total is 852. So I did some research and apparently this isn't so bad. So the research says there may be only 43 I think that are considered clones or duplicates of no value. This one has a CR2032 battery backup like a lot of games had. Apparently there's a redesigned one that does not need a battery backup, it stores it in some sort of non-volatile. And the benefit of that, from what I understand, there's multiple games in here that use a battery backup if you want, but only one at a time, whatever is the current game you're loading. Apparently it overwrites the memory and you can only back up the one game. So that's a little inconvenient. Apparently the one that just stores it non-volatile, I believe it stores all the game backups separately, so that would have been better, but again, I don't really care for my purposes. And I have a bunch of games anyway, including Zelda 1 and 2, so I can just replace the batteries in those if I really wanted to seriously play anything that needs a battery, if I have a separate copy. So out of the several chips on here, I had trouble finding search results. I don't know if I just searched for the wrong combination of numbers off of the chips. But the two main things are an Altera Max 2 CPLD programmable logic chip, and there's a 1 gigabit NOR flash, which presumably stores all of the game ROMs. So, however this actually works, whatever is working as a bus interface, it just does its thing. So let's try it out in my newly restored NES and see what's going on. There was something about pressing reset four to eight times for that CIC region thing. So whatever, I don't know what it means. I've got Blaster Master. Down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A. Only three, come on! I looked up the Konami code and it said sometimes you need to press select and sometimes start, which made no sense to me for Contra, but... Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A, select. Select again to go to one player and start. 30. Why did I need to do select? 
Well, I think I can say this is one of the more fun mailbags I've done in a while. Obvious nostalgia. Something more practical, getting this ESP working as the doorbell extender, miscellaneous parts, and upcoming project parts with these lighted rocker switches. Thanks to Patreon and channel supporters for helping make this possible.